Torres speaks from custody, says Buhari had to destroy civic space. The social activist, publisher and politician Omoyele Shiwore has spoken out from the custody of the state security service, telling Premium Times he is being heard as part of a grand scheme by the Buhari administration to shut down Nigeria's civic space. Mr. Shiwore called, on, called a Premium Times reporter on Thursday afternoon in a rare move to directly send out a message to the public. It was a message of courage, defiance and hope for both his teaming supporters and the Nigerian downtrodden people. The Sahara Reporter's publisher said he would remain undeterred by the controversial tactics of the current government, which have seen him head in perpetual custody against the order of a federal judge. Mr. Showare, a former student union activist who confronted military regimes and went to jail for it, was arrested in August in connection with his hashtag Revolution Now campaign, a series of a nationwide protest he had planned with other activists to demand a better Nigeria. The protests were planned to commence on August 5th across 21 towns and cities, with public awareness escalating as the day drew closer. But suddenly, on August 3rd, Armed SSS officers broke into an apartment Mr. Showare was occupying with some of his closest associates in Lagos. He was taken away in the midnight raid that was captured by security cameras. The arrest elicited outrage from Nigeria, with many slamming the SSS brutal tactics as yet another state sponsored violence against unarmed citizens. Members of the movement also warned that Mr. Showare's detention, which they deemed illegal and unwarranted, would bolster rather than dampen a wave of resistance to decades of bad governance that many believed had worsened under President Muhammad Buhari. Speaking with Premium Times from custody, Mr. Showare said the demand for his shorties was an attempt to intimidate them into pulling out. Their aim is to intimidate my shorties by subjecting them to undue maltreatment. Mr. Showare said it is part of a grand plot to hold me hostage because they have failed to find anything illegal to pin on me. But we know what they want to do and we will not allow it to happen, he, had, he added. Although the SSS has repeatedly asserted its respect for the Nigerian judiciary and the rule of law in general, the agency has a history of repression, violation of citizens, rights and disobedience of court decisions. SSS was the agency at the heart of most allegations of attacks of Nigerians during the brutal military eras of Ibrahim Babangida and Sani Abacha. Several Nigerians were jailed, physically attacked or killed as Mr. Abacha moved to clear all obstacles to his authoritarian regime. Despite attempts to reform the agency as Nigeria attained democracy in 1999, Critics say the SSS, founded in 1986, has remained wedded to its brutal and anti-democratic past. Mr. Shoray lamented that he had not seen sunshine since he was detained except when taken to court. Only three people have been allowed to see him since August 3rd, which includes his lawyers and the person responsible for his feeding. Even though Mr. Showare said he cannot wait to reunite with his associates and loved ones, he said he had come to a fresh realization that the SSS would continue to disregard court pronouncements and would not release him anytime soon. Last night, they gave us phones and cable TV, Mr. Showare said. This indicates that they have no intention of complying with court orders to release me anytime soon. Mr. Showare said he will continue to fight for the drowned children and wanted the world to know that the Buhari administration has been stifling civil liberties in Nigeria. The world should know that I remain unbroken and in high spirits, Mr. Showare said. He said, I will continue to fight for the Nigerian people, ensure that the people are not shortchanged and corruption is driven underground. I will continue to stand up for the downtrodden, he said. Mr. Showare said all those who support him should not be discouraged because the masses will prevail in the battle against anti-democratic forces. The ultimate mission is to intimidate all critical voices and shut down the nation's civil space, Mr. Showare said. But this will not happen and we shall 
and we shall overcome. On August 5th, after two days of leaving the country, confused as to the agency responsible for the break-in at Mr. Shore's apartment, the SSS conveyed a press briefing at its headquarters in Abuja. The secret police, police spoke, spokesperson, Mr. Afunaya, confirmed Mr. Shore was arrested for engaging in purported acts of subversion. Mr. Afunaya said Mr. Shore called for the overthrow of Mr. Buhari's government during campaigns ahead of the protests. An action the agency said was treasonable. When asked whether the, DSS, the SSS had independently collected any intelligence that corroborated his suspicion of Mr. Shore's alleged plot, Mr. Afunaya said the activist public comments were enough to charge him for treason, an allegation that carries death penalty if proven in court. The SSS subsequently obtained a court warrant to hold Mr. Shore in custody pending trial. Two weeks later, charges were filed against the Federal High Court that included terrorism, money laundry, and defamation of character. Mr. Shore's association associates and supporters derided the charges as empty because they not only poorly filed but also had no compelling evidence to be upheld in court. In particular, the claim that Mr. Shore committed money laundry was ridiculed by Ini Behe F. Young a rights activist and ally of Mr. Shore, who said Mr. Shore's transfer of funds between the Sahara Reporters' accounts through the former banking channels cannot be interpreted as money laundry. Mr. F. Young also said Mr. Shore's call for revolution was within his right to speech, saying at no time did, did he specifically demand an overthrow of Mr. Buhari. He also faulted the defamation charges against Mr. Shore for his comments against Mr. Buhari. The charges said, the charges said Mr. Shore made the comments on a television program, but it was charged under the Cyber Crime Act 2015, which did not capture slander on television or radio. Mr. F. Young joined other legal representatives of Mr. Shore, led by Femi Falano, to advance the arguments in court. Mr. Shore was initially granted bail on September 24th. But it was denied freedom by the SSS despite meeting conditions two days later. After disregarding the bail accorded to Mr. Shore by Taiwo Taiwo of the Federal High Court Abuja Division, the SSS filed duplicated charges against Mr. Shore before Ijoma Ojuku, another judge of the same division. After several days of trial before the new courts, Mrs. Ojuku granted bail to Mr. Shore on October 4th on stringent terms. His lawyers returned to court to seek a variation, variation of the conditions, which was approved by Justice Ujuku. On November 6, Mr. Shore's lawyers announced that the varied bail conditions had been met and the SSS had been served. On November 8, the SSS confirmed being said the court order, but said it would not comply because no one had turned up to collect Mr. Shore from custody. The statement sparked protests from rights activists. On November 12th, a protest was held outside the SSS headquarters in Abuja and its, fight, uh, its field offices in Lagos, during which activists and journalists were brutalized by operatives. On November 13th, as calls intensified by the SSS to comply with the court order, the agency released yet another statement saying it will continue to ignore the court order until a shorty can come for Mr. Showare in custody. The SSS action has continued to anger the public with Nobel laureate Wale Shoyinka weighing in. Lawyers argue that the SSS has no business with the shorties because they had been verified by the court and found competent to secure Mr. Showare's release. The judge also did not include a clause that required the SSS to demand to see Mr. Showare's shorties as a precondition for releasing him. The action has largely been seen as a brazen display of arrogance because the SSS has no powers to review the decision of a federal court. So guys, uh, all the later part of this, uh, what is it called, of this uh, old thing that we've just uh, talked about, you know, is something that we really, we are really aware of. But there's something that even Shawore himself said that the reason and which I have been talking about as a you know somebody who is not even uh 
who is not a, a profession, uh, professional in when it comes to law, that why do they really want the shorties to be involved? And just like lawyers have said from different quarters that you don't need that. The, the court had already done their uh, whatever and they've accepted the shorties and all of that. And it is not required for you to be as, uh, expecting the shorties. What do you want to do with the shorties? You just want to know the shorties. Does it mean they were not there? And one of the questions I've been asking, were they not in court when the whole thing was being processed? What are they trying to tell us? Were they not there? What do they need the shorties for? Do they want... The, but, and that is what this man has confirmed. Confirmed again. Shore has confirmed that. That they want to intimidate, they want to intimidate the, the shorties by dropping, uh, uh, you know, you know, by, by no, uh, you know, letting them continue with, you know, being shorties for him. That is just what they want to do. Because you ask, what do you want to do? We do with the shorties, like all these excuses that you're just bringing, you know, left, right, and center. They are not tenable anyway, and it's just they keep on as embarrassing the whole nation. So, guys, uh, that is what we've heard uh, from Obmoyele Shewore, that he's still encouraged, he's not being deterred, he's not discouraged, and he's still encouraging his people to continue with their, their, their faith. They shouldn't be discouraged at all. They should not be deterred by anything or by any intimidation of any kind. Now, he said they have provided some things for him, the cable and all of that. That shows that they are not ready to release him anytime soon. So, guys, let's hear from you and what you think about this whole thing. Thank you very much for always being there. Bye.